So guys, welcome back to the channel. This is my first official blog on the website. You can find the blog up here on my website and the link is down below. So today we're going to be talking about the William Hill Money Back If Second Offer blog 0001. This is because I intend to do a blog about every single offer and every single category in match betting. So luckily for me, I've got my own script here now. I've got this blog, so I shouldn't miss anything out like usual. So the money back offer is that if your horse finishes second, we abbreviate it to MB2. This offer's been around for a while, but I received many messages about what's the best approach. Um, this article will explain the experiences I've had because there's no exact there's no exact answer for this, guys. You know, like I get asked a lot, what is the best two up approach? You know, you can't specify what is because what might suit Jim won't, won't suit Bob. And also, you'd, you'd have to be a fool to say this is the exact correct method because there isn't an exact correct method. I got asked this question the other day on Twitter. If you're not following me on Twitter, I'm at Arbor Hunter. And a guy said, do you ever get have absolutely rubbish days on William Hill's second place offer? I've picked five winners out of eight races so far, resulting in loss due to underlays. Unbelievable. Now, the biggest problem I have with this is that it runs, it exhausts all your exchange funds, and I'll explain that in a moment. So let's get with this offer. It's, you'll get back £10 in cash if your horse finishes second. But the main terms are this. Minimum stake is a pound. Maximum stake is a tenner. Minimum odds is 4.0 or 3 to 1 in old money, and there must be four runners or more in the field. There's some other terms here. This will get a bit more exciting than talking about terms, but I want to get this out of the way first. It's your first bet that you do in a race, so don't make the mistake of having your little one pound punt and then doing this afterwards. You can do this as early as just one minute past midnight on a day. So let's say, for example, today is Thursday. If I place this bet on Thursday morning at five minutes past midnight, I'd be all right, unlike something like and I'd get bog as well, by the way, because you get bog past midnight with William Hill, by the way. I'll do a separate video on bog. And also, like with Paddy Power, you'll get it after 8 a.m. So for each way you bets, it already counts towards the win portion of the bet. Bets, like other bets, like unnamed favourites, future or anti-post bets don't count. It's only available on singles. If you do multiples, it don't count. Like with Bet365, if you do multiples on the two-up, you're good to go because they say you've done a treble on a two up and they all went two nil at some point you won your treble which is good but William Hill's terms state that they aim to offer this two meetings per race meetings per day however today when I'm recording this on Thursday the 10th of October they've only got one meeting on and it's at Furley's of all places Furley's by the way is an Irish racetrack so they also state that you'll get the money back within 24 hours. However, I've found William Hill quite good for this. I've found that they do it within a couple of hours. So the biggest problem with this offer, as you guys will probably know, is not finding close matches. The same problem that you find with the two up. So they don't make it easy, but this is a few things you can do. A lot of you already know this. It does get a bit spicier into this. You can use your boosts. You get free boosts per day for those of you who don't know, and you can have a stake up to £20. For example, if you do a selection as 4.0, they increase that to 4.23. I know that because I've done enough at 4.0. And 6.0, I think, is 6.4. 5.0, I think, is 5.3. And by doing these enhanced prices, you can usually find a close match or even an ARB. So I've questioned here, the third person. Won't ARBs be dangerous to my account? So I say it's theorised that taking ARBs by using boosts is not dangerous to your account. I say theorised, there's no one knows apart from the bookies, do they? Now I mentioned I use the word theorised because apart from the bookies, no one actually knows this. You know, you hear on so many of these channels or, comp or odds matching companies, they'll say, oh, by doing this you won't get gubbed because these are not ARBs. I'm not entirely convinced about this. I've been match betting since the 1990s and I'm the last person in the world to be scared of getting gubbed, you know. Um... It's like I say, I'm the polar opposite of a person who fears getting gubbed. I don't want to be gubbed, and I'll take all the precautionary measures within reason not to be gubbed. But sometimes you've got to bite the bullet, and you must accept to speculate to accumulate. 
and the fact that you will get gubbed at some point, but don't get paranoid about it. You know, you've got to weigh up. Am I into this to make money or am I in this to protect my account? You can't do both. So now I say, isn't it a waste of time on your boosts? But at the end of the day, what are you going to use these boosts for? The only other thing you'd be using for is OBS. And another thing, because you can get £20 max on these boosts, you could argue, why would you waste it on a tenner? Now, I'll talk about that in the mug staking section in the, in the next bit, but that's the only downside. I do know of people that do go to full 20. If you find a perfect match or an arb, always take the 20 because you've got the bog element, which I'll explain in a minute. So, rule of thumb, right? Even if it's a really skinny QL, always take the 20. If it's a close match, always take the 20. If it's an arb, always take the 20. You'd be a fool not to, and I'll explain that further on in the bog section. Mug staking, now similar to mug depositing, like for example, you doing a sky bet offer, you have a new customer, bet five, get 20. You don't want to be depositing five because, you know, if he arised again, it make you look like a not a mug punter. But also, just look at its convenience as well. You're probably going to need to deposit anyway, so just get it over and done with. Just get in these habits, you know, you might not fully believe it, but you're just covering the corners. You're not missing out by depositing more. You know, you, you, you're not like theorised gubbings like, oh, I'm not doing that in case I get gubbed. By depositing £20 instead of 5 you're not losing anything. So this practice involves trying to look like a mug by placing slightly higher or less than a case of £10. So instead of 10 put 11 on or put 9 on. Now I'll say here, yeah, by doing this, you could, notice I say could, I'm not like some of these other sites, they'll say this will fool them because they don't know. They shouldn't be saying stuff like this. They'll argue that, oh, we've got connections on the inside. They ain't got these connections, trust me. It says they could fool their detection algorithm into thinking that they're not liberty taker with the offers, but we're all liberty takers with the offers. Again, this is theorised speculation based on common sense, and I've been match betting far too long here to sit and say this will fool them as I will not state this unless I'm entirely sure because unless I know how their algorithm is programmed then I won't know for sure now at a guess 90% plus of these are run by computer algorithms no one's sitting there trawling through accounts or files or anything like that it's all programmed and then the program what it might do with some companies I've heard is that Someone will have physically review the account, but I've heard most of them are done on software. So combining the money back of second offer with other offers, now this is a great one. This is part of the in it to win it mentality. Now, if you're doing an offer like on a Saturday, bet 10, get 10 on a William Hill scratch, you can do that. Bet 10, get 10 if it's a horse racing um, offer that day, because they sometimes they do soccer and all this. You've also got a chance on this money back of second if it was on that meeting. You've also got a chance of a bog, which I'll explain in a minute, and you've also got the chance of a non-runner, which I'll explain in a minute. However, in August, September, William Hill reduced most of these offers to bet five, get two pound. But some lucky accounts have still got the 10 pound. Right. So you can use it in conjunction with these. If you deem the bet five, get two pound free, not worth flagging up your account, then don't do it. Like I said, it's down to you to decide. No one's going to wave the magic wand and say, oh, if you do this, this is the right way, because no one knows. Don't You've got to get out of that mindset of believing what these people say, because a lot of it's just repackaged information. Um, also, when you do this, every selection you back has a chance of drifting in price. You may get a bog. Bog is explained later. And also, you may get a non-runner. So I'm publishing a book about this soon. Uh, but non-runners... If I found there's a mean general mean annual average to be profited and very welcome circumstance. To cut a long story short, if a horse is a non-runner and it's over odds of 15.0, the Tattersall's rule, rule 4 won't deduct from the bookmakers, yet the exchange do. So because the exchange have to deduct their percentage in order to readjust the percentage of their book, when the percentage is applied, this consequently adjusts your lay bet to lower odds. So an example I've put here. I'll leave the link to the blog down below. If you've laid something at 4.0, so let's say you've had a direct close match, sorry, a perfect match, 4.0 back, 4.0 lay. 
there's now been two non-runners in that field and um, the two non-runners are outsiders and it's not affected that so there's only been a deduction with the exchange you can see that your lay sometimes is readjusted to for example here 3.55 yeah you're getting paid out 4.0 now this might not be much with 10 pound bet but say you had like a total of 100 pound on it you know it starts getting into a different game then you've won an extra 45 pound or so or even if you've only done 10 pound you might win an extra four pound 50. so a lot of these usually happen in the rainy weather the reason i say that is because when it rains the horses have already been sent to the race course and that and it's been unexpected rain and horses and going on the ground is a bit like a tennis player playing on grass and playing on clay it makes so much impact on a race horse racing uh once i had so many non-runners in one race i had a 50 percent accumulative advantage meaning like so say my 4.0 lay i had it at like odds of 2.5 so 4.0 is odds three to one 2.5 is half of three to one which is six to four so you know like i said i've got a book coming out of this soon this is a really good thing to get your heads around so timing time is crucial with these offers so a lot of the biggest problem people do is they'll visit their PC at say 11 o'clock in the morning and they'll think right I'm going to smash this out and then I'm going to get on with my day so I say for example it's 10.27 and you want to get all your money back if second offer matches sorted in one visit to the PC but the odds are probably not going to be close matches the only ones you'll find are probably going to be the ones using the boosts so if you are a full time match better or if you're one of them people who've just work on a computer all day at work and you can be slippery on the on a computer then just go on it every hour or every two hours you've got far more chance of making the matches same with two up same with each way uh there's an each way um link here to the article i made about finding each way extra places so bogs and qls on this offer now what you're going to find is that you'll rack up a load of qls if you don't get many of these come second but then you're welcomed by Uncle Bog. Uncle Bog comes to help you. So for those not aware, Bog means best horse guaranteed. I mean, if you backed your horse at 4.0 and it wins at SP at 5.1, you'll get paid out at 5.1. So what my point is with this, at a guesstimate, Bog happens around 15 to 20% of the time now. I'm sticking my neck out here because I don't even know that's true. But I've done enough of this over the years. I think it's around that. Or if I'm going to sit on the fence, I'd say 10 to 25%, right? Um, I've even had a bog once, as mentioned here. I backed it at 4.0 and it won at 21.0. Um, the weird thing is that was with William Hill back in 2014, five years ago. So if you average out these bog enhancements and take that off of your qualifying loss, this is what I'm trying to get you to think like, you know. Yeah, you moan about the qualifying losses, but what about the times when you have these bog win, when they actually win? You know, when it hasn't come second, you've lost out on your tenner, but you might have had one that was 4.0, yeah, and it wins at 7.0, and you've won 30 quid. And that they do happen regular if you do this offer enough. But like I say, a lot of people get scared because of the QLs, always thinking in the back of your mind, Uncle Bog is there to save you. But I don't think variance will the bog will be as much as the QLs but it can be if the bogs are big ones so there's another section here I hate it when I win and this going back to this guy here he's had five winners out of eight races now this what I'm about to tell you here is not match betting so that was a bit like this guy on Twitter um, when he said he's had five winners out of eight races he was kicking himself now what I used to do <clears throat> was um was do accumulators and trebles and all this, but silly money, 5p each way and all this. And it's all written in the in the article. Like, if you'd done a £5 each way accumulator on four horses, all priced at 8.0, you'd get £204.80 back. Now, the likelihood of that happening is not very likely, but if you do it each way, some might place and some might win. But that's just a good like little bit of insurance if that ever did happen. Because when I used to have full-time... I think it was between 20, 2010 and 2016, something like that. We used to get this happen a lot. 
sometimes I've been wiped out for ten, tens of thousands of pounds on Betfair and it's so, oh, don't, I hate it. So when this happens, um, say you are wiped out, say you've lost all your money in your exchange and everything's won at William Hill, for example, if, you've, but if your um, bankroll is a smaller bankroll. These are the problems you're going to have. All your money's in a fixed odds wallets. You then need to withdraw. This could take days. It could take two or three days before you can match bets. So you've got no profits for two or three days. You know, like this is on the assumption you do it on debit card, which if you knew, you'd probably be on that because the bookies force us to do it now. But if you'd have done this one up here, this 5p each way accumulator, or done it in a Yankee where you can have a multiple, then you'd be thinking, yeah, I don't mind waiting three days. I've made £204 out of 10 pence. So the conclusion I give on this is that I found this offer a great offer. I visit it daily, intermittently throughout the day. Notice I say intermittently throughout the day. I don't expect to get all my lays done in one hit. I'll go and come back, go and come back. If you're at work, if you can't do it like that, then just stick to just before the race usually. But the problem with that is just before the race, even though it's possible, you've got less chance of a bog happening. So you've got to weigh it all up. There's no direct answer. I prefer the in it to win it mentality. Now, what I say here, the in it to win, win it mentality means involving yourself with as many bets where you hold one or more forms of possible advantage and then annually waiting for the inevitable to happen. So when I say that, it's the chance of bog, the chance of non-runners, when horses get disqualified and there's reverse placings, the, all this kind of thing. You may be taking QLs very often, but if you count the QL versus the £10 cashbacks, the bogs, the non-runners, it's a no-brainer. And this is the way you've got to look at match betting, the in it to win mentality. Don't just sit there thinking, oh, I can't do that, that's QL. I can't do that, I can't do that. Try and get involved with as much as you can. Of course, don't take big QLs, but learn to be a bit flexible. Don't think that everything's straightforward because it's not. So I hope you found that helpful, guys. The link I'll leave below to the blog um, that's on my website. If you haven't checked out my website, check it out. Um, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel here and updates on the website there. So these blogs will be very regular. If there's anything you want in particular, drop it down below or message me and I'll do my best. Good luck, guys.